Hi everyone, welcome to Pharmagist. Myself Dr. Haimavati. So in the present video, we will be learning about what is lead optimization and what is its importance in drug design. So as you can see, I have posted a number of videos on computer aided drug design. So if you are interested to learn computer aided drug design from the basics to the advanced study, I have posted a step by step videos. So you if you go through the videos that I have uploaded in my channel, you can see that uh, initially I started with an introduction of computer aided drug design. Then there is a video on the representations, on the types of representations. And then I have made video on homology modeling and then scoring functions. And then you have a video on what is molecular docking and uh, demo videos also. So I have posted two demo videos on how to load and visualize the structure in a pi mole and then how to perform docking using pyrix and analyzing the docking interactions using discovery studio so you can see all the videos are in a step by step manner and i have posted a different playlists also if you are interested to learn only homology modeling then the playlist on homology modeling you can see the homology modeling videos and if you are interested to learn only docking so you can see all the videos in the docking playlist similarly for structure based drug design so if you go through the videos they are in a step by step manner where you can get a clear understanding from the basics to the advanced uh, and there are videos on molecular dynamics also so please go through the videos and if you like the videos and if you find them informative so do consider to like and subscribe to my channel now let's begin our video so what is lead optimization for example consider this as a lead molecule so a lead molecule is that which is obtained from a virtual screening study so when you in when you do drug design you have and uh, millions of compounds so you take millions of compounds from different databases and then you perform virtual screening using different softwares like schrodinger's docking or uh, pyrex or autodoc vena so you apply a, a lot of filters so out of these millions of compounds you narrow down them to some hundreds of compounds and after getting those hundreds of compounds you inspect them manually analyze their docking interactions with the target protein so based on the binding affinity and interaction you know normally narrow down into fewer molecules 10 or 20 molecules and then you synthesize them and then you subject them to testing in in vitro conditions and in vivo conditions so when you do this testing where the obtained compound is known as a lead molecule and if the activity is less then what you do is you bring about changes in this molecule so you can say that this lead compound is the starting point for our quest for a potential new drug this you can compare with a similar analogy to identifying the diamond from the nature so from the nature you get a rough stones and these stones are polished and it involves a lot of process to in order to get the gem that is the diamond which is a very precious one similarly our ligand also the lead molecule also needs a lot of uh, modifications to be done in order to obtain the potential drug so what is lead optimization so let us see so when you take this lead molecule so you make uh, bring about uh, functional change uh, changes in functional group or in the side chain you make modifications in order to increase its select potency increase its selectivity so that you can get a successful drug so we fine-tune our lead compound in order to enhance its potency selectivity and safety so uh, this transforms our lead into an optimized drug candidate with the highest chances of success So what we do in this lead optimization process is initially we take the lead molecule then we modify the lead and then test the lead. So this testing is done in two ways. First one is in vitro testing and then is in vivo testing. So both this in vitro and in vivo testing 
these are done under laboratory conditions that means these testing uh, methods they are performed in the laboratory they are not done in the human beings so first we do it in the in vitro laboratory and the in vivo laboratory so in vivo means we test that on the bacterium so different bacteria and cell lines when we test it is known as in vivo and then in vitro so when it becomes successful in this both in this in vitro and in vivo testing conditions it becomes a successful molecule so if it fails in this uh, in vitro and in vivo conditions what we do is again we modify the lead and again we test it so this is an iterative process so if it is successful it will go into the next step in the chain otherwise if it fails we do what we do is we modify the lead again we bring about a side chain modifications changes in the functional group and synthesize it and then again test it so if it becomes successful then it goes to the next step that is the clinical testing so in this clinical testing we do first pre preclinical testing and after that if it passes the preclinical testing then it undergoes human clinical trials and if it becomes successful in human clinical trials also then it gets the fda approval as a new drug so overall this is the lead optimization process so in in vitro testing it allows us uh, how well our optimized compound interacts with the intended target in the controlled laboratory conditions so i have previously told you in vitro testing and in vivo testing are actually conducted in the laboratory so after optimizing our lead compound we have to test it and see how well it uh, performs in the controlled laboratory conditions and then sophisticated assays also are used in order to measure the binding affinity potency and selectivity so which gives us valuable data in order to narrow down on the best candidates and then in vivo testing it was it involves testing in living organisms so these living organisms are bacteria and cell lines so in this it helps us in testing how our optimized leads behave in more complex biological environment so factors like pharmacokinetics toxicity efficacy all these help in gaining critical insights into how the compounds perform in real life scenario so in this i have taken a case study that is a publication on lead optimization so this study is actually a my own publication so this is a part of my phd work which i have done and published in bioorganic medicinal chemistry letters so if you are interested to read the entire article i will give the link to the article in the description box so uh, go to the description and find the link to this article and in brief i will explain about this article so in this i have designed and synthesized novel molecules that is 3n substituted glycinamido benzoic acid derivatives and tested them in vitro for their antimicrobial activity so here what i have done is this is the initial lead molecule which i obtained from uh, virtual screening study so even the if you see in my previous videos so i have uploaded one video on structure based drug design so in the structure based drug design i have explained how i got this lead molecule so this lead molecule i obtained it from a virtual screening study and then i synthesized this molecule and tested for its in vitro anti dp activity so then i got an activity of 100 microgram per ml so when i tested it under h37 rv mycobacterium it gave an mic value of 100 microgram per ml then uh, out of this lead molecule what we did is we got the intermediates also so because this is a very large molecule we uh, synthesized this molecule in parts and finally we combined it into the entire large molecules so those intermediates also we tested for their anti tb activity so these got an uh, intermediates they showed an activity of 25 micrograms per ml so out of those intermediates we selected one intermediate that is 32 chloracetamido benzoic acid so this uh, scaffold we have taken and for this scaffold we made changes in this uh, 
uh, functional group. So this functional group was modified using different alkyl amines and aromatic amines and we obtained a number of derivatives. So those derivative compounds they were again tested for their in vitro anti TB activity and this time we got an activity of 1.6 microgram per ml. So you can see there is a drastic improvement of activity from 100 microgram per ml to 1.6 microgram per ml so this is the power of lead optimization so here you can see this is the practical example of how a lead optimized molecule it brings about changes and it the activity increases so this is the fascinating journey of lead optimization in drug discovery so it is an iterative process so i have previously explained how the iterative process takes place so we keep on making changes in the compound we synthesize it we test it and if the activity is low then again we make changes in the molecule and again we test it so this testing continues until we find the diamond so until we find the diamond among our lead candidates so this drug candidate with the perfect balance of effectiveness and safety so for, by doing lead optimization we select the most promising candidate in order to move forward into the preclinical studies and eventually human clinical trials so success in clinical trials is the moment of our optimized lead molecule which transforms into a potential life-changing medication so this is about lead optimization so i hope you, the video was informative and you liked the video so if you like the video do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel and watch also the other videos which i have posted in my channel so to get better understanding you watch the structure based drug design molecule video also so i will give the link to that also in the description box as well as you can see above the screen in the i symbol will be displayed so there also i'll give a link to that so do watch the other videos in my channel and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching see you in the next one